Hey, welcome to See Stuff, Do Stuff. I'm Chad, this is C2Fab, and today we're going to be talking about what it takes to upload a file into the Langmire Systems Crossfire Pro and get your machine ready to cut. So one of the first steps in getting your machine ready to go is obviously to turn it on and plug your USB cable in. Once you have that done, you will be able to open fire control and in fire control you'll be able to see the machine. Um, all of the controls on the dashboard of fire control should light up and you should be able to click on the buttons. First thing you do when you want to load a program in is click the up button, choose the file folder that you're pulling out of, and then open. So you can see how quick that was. Okay, first things first, you want to home your machine. That's assuming that you have the limit switches installed on your machine. If you don't have limit switches on your machine, ignore this step. So to do that, to home our machine, we just run down here and click home. Then it prompts us that we wanna make sure we're gonna say home the machine. You can hear it doing its thing in the background. It's gonna hit the limit switches and then bump back off of them. Like with the little stepper motors, it'll All right, so now we are homed. Okay, now that we've got our machine homed, the next thing we're gonna do is throw our work material up on the machine itself, and then square it all up to the bed, and then set our work zeros. All right, here we go. So, to move the machine, you can use the up and down arrows. After I get it really close, I come down here and I choose to slow the machine down. So I'm gonna go down to 50 inches per minute for fine tuning. And so now I can really dial this in. The last thing I do is I come back over here, I turn the speed back up, okay? And then I move along the axis to the farthest point and then I take a look again to see how straight I was along the edge of the material. I did pretty good. I might be out by an eighth of an inch or so. I'm just gonna push it over slightly so that it lines up. And then all I'm gonna do is pushing the arrow key again, move it back along and keep an eye on it. That looks like it's tracking right along the bottom edge of that material nice and straight. So I am now confident that this work material I'm going to be using is square to the table. I just run back over here to the machine, or excuse me, over to the laptop, and I run up here and I click zero all work axes. Boom. Okay, now we have our machine zeroed on the work material we have a small issue. You'll notice that this lead-in is actually off of our material. If you remember where we zeroed the uh, work zero on the material we wanna cut, this is the very corner of that work material. So what we need to do is give ourselves a little bit of working space. So what we wanna do is we wanna move our x-axis over about this distance inside of the work material. Another thing we wanna do is we're gonna to wanna to give ourselves a little bit of space along the bottom of the material as well. So we're gonna go ahead and move up. I'm gonna to try to copy that same distance that I had here and here. All we gotta do is um, run over here to zero all work axes again and click that and you see it jumped back. Now we know when we start this cut that this piece, this lead in will be on our material itself. All right, so now we are ready to set our machine to cut. To do that, we need to change our feed rate and our pierce delay based on the thickness of the material that we are putting on the bed of the machine. So I just threw um, some eighth inch up there. And so I know from experience with my machine and with the settings that I entered into Fusion 360 that to get the best quality cut out of that, I need to come over here to the feed rate take it down to 70%, and then I need to take the pierce delay and usually bump it up to about 120 to 130, so we're gonna go with 135 here. Um, so don't 
don't look at my 70% and 125 and think that's what you need to put into your machine, into fire control. Um, this is completely based on the settings that you have set up in your program that you use to create the files that you feed to fire control. So I had a quick idea, and I'm gonna show you real fast what I did. I actually flipped this material over so that I'm not wasting, because this is still a good chunk of uh, material here. If I put a you know, cut in the corner of it, kind of wastes that whole area. So what I did was I went ahead and flipped it around so we're here. I'm gonna quickly go through the machine and zero everything back up again to make sure everything's square. Um, but I'm gonna go back to screen recording real fast, and I'm gonna show you how to um, do a pattern so we cut multiples of these um, tabs out and get up to this point. Um, I just thought that might be a quick little cool bit to add into this video. So to pattern something in fire control, you run down here to the patterning button, turn that on, and because of the way I have it oriented on the bed of the Langmire Systems Crossfire Pro, uh, what we do is we go to columns in this situation and we're just gonna make it a three. And then we're gonna keep it in one row because um, if we go above, we're gonna run into a spot that's already been cut on the material um, to work with. So we're just gonna make three of these in a row going you know, across. Now I'm gonna generate, there we go. Okay, so now we have three in a row. We know that it is going to be a grand total of 6.82 inches at a height of 2.05, which you can see right here. So I'm gonna run over to the machine with the tape measure real fast, double check that I've got enough sp space to do that. And then we can finally hit the start button and cut something. You can see that I've got two, almost two and three quarters inches. So I got plenty of space along there. And then we were looking for just over six. So we'll be coming into this zone. So we know that that program will fit on this little scrap bit of metal. Okay, got my goggles on, ready to go. Air compressor is turned on, good to go. So we are going to finally click start. That's it, so torch is done, air turned off, come over here, you'll see the program is complete. And that's what it takes to get your machine to cut something. Well, that does it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I hope it was informative, you learned something. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.